All right, guys, I want to share with you the Draken Tugela version 2.0. So uh, before we get into the watch, I just want to share a brief history on how I even brought this watch in. So Keith, a uh, Patreon to the Random Rob channel, we, him and I were talking on the Discord um, system we have set up for the Patreons of the Random Rob channel. And uh, he has been looking at this exact model, this the blue bezel with the black or dark blue, I can't tell. I think it's black dial on this guy. And, you know, I talk to John Keel over at uh, Watch Gauge all the time. So I, I told Keith, I'm like, hold on, let me hit up John. I can, I'm can, i sure I can get one in. John's super cool to deal with. So I hit up John. John sent it over. Big thanks to John at the Watch Gauge. If you have not purchased a micro brand or a G-Shock from the Watch Gauge, go check it out. I'll put a link in the description because that is where I recommend buying this. I don't know where else you can actually buy it, but that's where you're going to want to buy it. So now that it's here and we're checking it out, I understand why John says that the owner, uh, I think it's Michael, the owner of Draken, pretty much underpriced this thing at only $349. Um, it's all stainless steel. It's blasted so it's kind of like it looks titanium-ish but it's not it's stainless steel and then just beautiful pop of color so we'll we'll do some close-ups and we'll talk about that a little bit more but let's just let's get right into the video and talk about the case size first because that's what we like to do right so on the top now if you if you're seeing that this has a bit of a Reese's uh, peanut butter cup shape to it so I got two measurements for you for the case width 42 millimeter on the bezel so that would be the widest point up top excluding the crown guards on the crown but i did uh, manage to grab a measurement on the bottom part underneath and i measure about 39.65 so that's going to be closer to what it's going to feel like on your wrist even though it's going to have a much larger wrist presence so it's going to visually it's going to look like a nice size watch but on wrist, it's going to feel more comfortable. And that's pretty much the secret that Seiko does with their cushion cases and stuff like that. So it's going to be sweet. Um, 39, no, 39.65 is the bottom case. 48.3 is what I measure lug tip to lug tip here. Non-drilled lugs, but they have a nice angular turn down to them. And 13.7 thick, about, you know, so about 13 and a half millimeter to the top of the domed sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating on the underside. Really nice transition, clean fitment, sapphire to bezel. So sometimes there you can feel something. This is a nice clean uh, transition from that slope. 22 millimeter lug width here. The bracelet is a non-tapering 22 millimeter. And you can see um, all milled out clasps. This part's stamped, but the center part's milled. Three micro adjusts. Pretty standard, you know, micro brand affair. You're gonna have the fold over keeper with the name and then the double pushers. Um, I'm personally just a fan of that. I don't want to see a ton of improvements on that unless you're gonna go full blown, kind of like how Christopher Ward or Omega does with the really nice double pushers, no fold over and a micro adjust on the fly, but that's the next price level. That's up there a ways. So you can see the bracelet is all individual links, so and they're short. So you're gonna get um, you know, a very comfortable like tank-like tread on your wrist. So super comfortable there. And there's arrows, so I'm guessing it's a split pin. Yeah, it looks like a split pin. I'm totally fine with that. You guys know my thought on, you know, pin and collar or split pins or screws. I'm totally fine with split pins. It's super fast and easy to size up a bracelet and it's plenty secure. It's not like you're going to be pulling pins in and out all the time. You're going to get this thing sized for your wrist and then you're just going to wear it. So I'm totally fine with that method. Uh, sign screw down crown excellent knurling on that insane amount of traction on the bezel too for the bezel grip 120 click that's magic that is such a good bezel action and uh, everything lines up 120 click like i said and then super legible handset on this guy and the date is at the six o'clock there and it's not framed in so much as it is just printed around with that orange that also ties in with the minute hand and the tip of the seconds hand. Nice pop of color. I like, you guys know I like my orange, so when you integrate just a little splash of orange is always welcome in any colorway, I think. I mean, I don't know. I think it just works with pretty much any colorway. So uh, there you go. I mean, super legible. Nice oversized hands. Plenty of uh, real estate for loom. Um, I didn't see what the loom is on this. Um, it's fully loomed out, so I'll do a loom shot at the end. I'm guessing it's some sort of C3 though. And you can see that 
Seconds Hand's beating away at about a Seiko beat rate movement, and that's because it is running the NH35 automatic movement. So you're going to get, um, when you unscrew the crown, nice little pop to it. You're going to get a nice wind to it. And look at the knurling on that crown. I mean, the knurling and then the sharpness of the bezel is insane traction. Super easy to operate. I love that insignia, too, on the sign crown. So you're going to get a nice wind action there. First position is going to be your date change. And then you're going to be able to hack and then adjust the time. Very cool logo on this. No need to backspin, I found, on this thing either. You can pretty much just push it in and thread it in. Very good threading on this. So let me pop this on wrist real quick. I think maybe you guys noticed the uh, Draken name is in etched onto the um, case side here. So, But it's just cleanly done. I don't have a problem with that at all. I know some people may or may not have a problem with that, but maybe you shouldn't be looking at micro brands. They, they have to do things to kind of set themselves apart. And I think the colorway, the case size, the shape of it, everything is unique on this. Um, I was watching the original video that John did when he was announcing that he was bringing this brand to um, the watch gauge. And he's got some amazing looking limited edition blue one so hopefully Draken, if you're watching this or you're listening to this and i'm sure you're working with john hopefully the sales are going good and hopefully you can do another really cool limited edition colorway i think those are always very special and uh, unique so fit on wrist is amazing i mean it is just very comfortable even with the non-tapering bracelet which it also comes with this nato strap I think they pair up different colors depending on what model you order because there are different colorways. I think a couple of them may be sold out, but I really like this blue. There's a red one as well. I forget what other colors they have. Um, weight on it, not size. Now, I didn't size it because it is a brand new watch, um, and it's it's not my watch. Uh, weight on it with no links removed, 210 grams. So it has a little bit of heft to it as well, um, which I kind of like. You know, I like my light watches, but when I want to wear a little bit heavier, hefty watch, then that 210, that's a good sweet spot. It really is. I think you get too much, like you start getting into like 250, 270 range. That's a beast of a watch. So here it is next to a Seiko SKX. Just for a little size comparison, you can see it has some similarities. You know, dive watch, similar case sizes and stuff like that. But just excellent pop of color. I mean, that blue on the bezel is just stunning. So I think, I think Keith, you were right in, in picking this one for sure. This watch might end up going right to Keith. We'll see. Um, oh, there's a case back. You can take a look at that. Nicely done case back. A little bit of information on there. 300 meter. Oh, they're number two. Number three. You get upside down dyslexia there. Number 369. Maybe I can hold it up, right side up for you guys. Maybe that'll be better. I don't know what that is. Some sort of terrain under underwater solid end links on it and you can see that first link obviously articulates and the bracelet lays flat on it like that so just a great watch without trying to be anything else other than you know what the other michael wanted it to be and that's he nailed it i like the six o'clock i like the powerful handset and the color um, i even like the blasted finish you know because usually i go for bling and everything like that sometimes it's nice to just kind of settle it down a little bit and let's focus on the color of the watch and let's not have any polished bits. I like that. It's a nice power move. I would like to see maybe a um, you know some brushed and polished version too. Maybe that could be an idea for a future limited edition one. Maybe with a bracelet that tapers. Just some constructive criticism. Um, if you'll if you'll take it. If you'll listen. <laughs> um, let me give you guys a loom shot because the loom is actually really good. I already kind of previewed it. But yeah, fully loomed out. Tons of real estate. And if you look, well, you guys can see it. Um, to the naked eye, it's a little hard, harder to spot because there's so much other loom going on. But your date on the date wheel is actually loomed. And you can see that clearly in the, in the video, I think. To the naked eye, it's a little more difficult to, to focus in on it because, like I said, there's so much other loom going on. Also loomed crown. So loom junkies rejoice. Microbrand junkies rejoice. Um, value shoppers rejoice. $349.00. And you get an excellent buying experience buying from John over at the watch gauge. This thing's a home run, guys. I'll see you on the next vid.